Welcome back. Today we are talking about points of concurrency. All right, let's start off. I have given you these special little pieces of paper, and I told you that these are called patty paper because they are from the restaurant supply store and they're wax paper. They have a shiny side and a dull side, and if you're drawing with a pencil, uh, I would draw on the dull side. It seems to work much better. The waxy side will will uh, be harder to uh, show up on. Uh, today I'm going to use uh, a Sharpie, and you can do the same, and so that it will show up on here. All right, let's begin. I have drawn, and you should too, a uh, acute scaling triangle, something like this, that uses up most of the patty paper. And what we're going to do is do a special type of construction. It's kind of referred to as patty paper construction because we're using patty paper. It's not a true construction because we know constructions are compass and straight edge. But here's my triangle. And what we're going to do is we're going to bisect the angles. We had to do this in one of the problems. And to bisect an angle means that we are going to make a line that goes right through the vertex and that both angles in half. So we're just going to cut it in half. And to do that, we fold the paper. The great thing is you can see through it, right? We need the, we need the two sides to line up. And I want to go through the vertex. So I put my thumb at the vertex line up the two sides, and then I crease it. Then you'll, you'll see that because it's wax paper, there's a thin white line, and that's my angle bisector. So let's do it again. Line up these two sides and bisect the angle. One more vertex, one more angle bisector. Uh, I might have been a little off there. Uh, but if you did it correctly, and you were very careful with doing it, your three angle bisectors meet at one point. And that's what concurrent means. That three or more lines which tend towards or go and meet at one point, right? So we have the three angle bisectors of this triangle seem to meet at one point. And w I just bet that you didn't make the exact same triangle that I did. And if you did it correctly, it worked out the same. So inductively, it seems like it would work for every, every triangle. And as a matter of fact, it does. The three angle bisectors, I'm going to write on here, angle bisectors. because I'm going to keep track of this, right? Um, now, what's special about this point? Well, if I wanted to, I could construct a perpendicular from there, and since this isn't perfect, I'm going to just use my divider here and, and look at it. And the perpendicular distance from this point to the sides should be the same. If I do the exact, the shortest distance. So, at some point here, and of course, if I use the construction tools, I would be, I'd be able to really figure it out. So, I'm kind of sketching it on there, and lightly you can see that, that I actually can make a circle inside the triangle. And if you recall, that's an inscribed circle inside the triangle, and this point has a special name, and it's called the incenter. I-N-C-E-N-T-E-R. Because it is the center of the inscribed circle. All right. New triangle, new piece of patty paper. Okay, this time I made it a little bit smaller, but once again, I'm trying to make it uh, acute and also scaling. Doesn't matter. Um, so... This time, what we're going to do, instead of angle bisectors, we're going to do a perpendicular bisector, meaning that we're going to make a perpendicular line that goes through the middle of the sides. It's pretty easy to do on patty paper. I think that everybody would understand the middle is found darn easy by matching 
square text to vertex. And to make it perpendicular, well, that just means what we're going to angle bisect a straight line, which is nothing more than creasing it once the side lines up with itself. Can you see that? I'm lining up the side with itself, stopping at vertex to vertex. When I crease it, I get the perpendicular bisector. Now, continue every side. Okay, now it looks like again that they meet at one point and this point I'm going to write on here. We of course we made this with the perpendicular bisectors. What's special about this point, this point now if I go over here it is not equidistant to every side. Look, it's already, you can tell it's closer to this one than it is over here. But it is equidistant to every vertex. See that? Point, point, point. So that's pretty cool. Meaning that I can make a circle that went around the triangle. Now I'm scratching. If you have a compass, that would look a lot better, right? So there, it's equidistant to every circle. So the circle circumscribes the triangle this time. And instead of in center, this one is called the circumcenter. Circumcenter. And I'm going ahead and add equidistant to each side. Equidistant. Excuse me, not side. To each vertex. Next triangle. Notice I'm not keeping the same one every time. I don't care. Uh, so this time we. This is probably the easiest one to do. We're going to do uh, make medians. All right. So a median goes from vertex to the midpoint. So I could do a perpendicular bisector, but I don't really need the perpendicular bisector. I need the middle. And to find the middle, all you have to do is fold over your patty paper and pinch it. Okay? There's the middle. If I'm going to make a median, I need a straight edge. So I go from the middle. I'm going to draw on this. I'm not going to try to fold it to the vertex. Right? All right. Continue. Middle. and vertex. Now, this one is made with medians. And it is got a special name. This is another point of concurrency. The name of this one is the best name. This is called the centroid. And what's special about the centroid is, I'm going to get my real compass this time. If I were to take that median, Notice, try to do this with me. If I take the compass and I put it on the centroid and I, and I follow the median out, and then I swing it over here and I make a mark. Oh, this seems like I missed a little bit here because I know what should happen. This distance, swing, this distance. Let's see if it works better here. Fat Sharpies, this is where it goes wrong. Uh, much better. 
How did yours work? If I if I measure a length on the other side should be I think I missed must have missed one. It should be that see Mr. Word's not perfect. This distance is half as much as this distance or the distance on this side is twice as big as this one's. And now they don't all match. This one's a different distance, and this one is twice as big. It's pretty darn cool. Um, and whatever distance this is, this one is twice as big. I'll put a Z. All right, it divides it up, the triangle, that way. Last triangle that you need to make. I made an acute triangle. Make sure you make an acute triangle on this one. And this is probably the hardest folding that you'll have to do. And this time we've done medians, uh, angle bisectors, perpendicular bisectors. The last thing, next, last, last special segment that we haven't done is a altitude. To make an altitude, we have to go from the vertex perpendicular to the opposite side. Okay, so to make it perpendicular, we fold side over top of itself, yes? but. This time we have to go through this vertex, so it's kind of tricky. I've got to hold that vertex, so I've got the vertex in my left hand, and then I ooch the paper over so that it's on top of itself. See, these constructions are not perfect, as per the centroid. All right, so that's pretty darn close to an altitude. It's better than some of your drawings, I'll tell you that worse than some of your drawings too. All right, so let's do another altitude through that vertex. Perpendicular to the opposite side. Notice I'm not worried about that side right there. Side on top of its side through that vertex. Okay, and then finally on top of itself and through that vertex. Yay! Also concur concurrent. This one we used the altitudes. Altitudes. And we made a new point. The name of this point is called the orthocenter. And I am going to stop right there because uh, what's special about that point is for the next video. So let's review a little bit. We start it with the angle bisectors, and that's the in center, equidistant to each side. The perpendicular bisectors makes the circumcenter equidistant to each vertex. The medians makes a centroid, and it divides each median into two segments, one which is half as big as the other. And then finally, the orthocenter, which is made with altitudes. Okay, we will see you next time.